we last year mm -hmm. we had um, written a script a play called the pride land mm -hmm. and this is just again talking about yeah. Africa and bringing Africa again mm -hmm. to the forefront mm. and 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 being part of the positive narrative mm. of Africa mm. because what what most people hear yeah is all the gory stories know, yeah. and that's not Africa no, you and I know that that's not Africa. <laughs> you know as a people we are not culturally wired to love ourselves mm. and this is a problem <laughs> It doesn't matter how crazy America is or what's going on in America. An American would hold an American flag and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm American. American. Yeah. Now, an African is much prouder to hold a blue passport mm -hmm. than he, he is to hold a green passport. If you have an advice on what you've been able to observe over the years uh, in this industry that you want to give an advice to an investor, what would you say he should focus on? What kind of industry they should you know, kind of dive themselves into or invest into? Mm -hmm. Before advising on industry, because to be honest with you, mm -hmm. really um, and truly, mm -hmm. whoever is looking to invest in Africa mm -hmm. needs to understand that it's okay to do it afraid. Mm. Um, nothing is going to... You, there is no report or case study that would that, give you the that is going to give <laughs> you a textbook approach yeah. to why you should come to Africa mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. In every situation, mm -hmm. you have to look for the light. Mm. You know, I, I I do not believe that where there's trouble, mm -hmm. the first thing that anybody should think of is to run away mm. from the trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you walking into less trouble? Mm. Are you walking into less? less of a situation mm -hmm. if you said you were moving from lagos to the yeah. nigeria to ghana yeah. ghana to cote d'ivoire to you know mm -hmm. as long as for me mm -hmm. as long as we are investing mm -hmm. and fueling the pot of africa mm -hmm. nothing else matters mm -hmm. and in every situation always look for the light mm -hmm. and if you have your eyes on the ball mm -hmm. then all the challenges mm -hmm. will just be you know things you have to yeah, deal with you'll enjoy why, it why you th well, are there problems in the uk yes. and there problems in the us there is and there problems in south africa problem everywhere. everybody has their problems so that can be your excuse you have to own your problem mm -hmm. and absolutely love it i like that yeah hello guys so welcome back again to another amazing episode and as you guys already know we are here in nigeria lagos vi looking at some properties interviewing entrepreneurs uh even sometimes diasporans as well and uh, today we happen to have here someone very special we are on the property here in Echo Hotel is one of the best hotel here. Arguably. In, the best. Arguably. <laughs> I've been lodging here for the past eight days now. I love it. And I'm like, you know, I want to have a conversation with the people behind this, you know, just to shine more light on it. So people in the Dash Park moving here will know the best place to stay when they are here in Lagos. So without further ado, Ia, yeah, welcome on the show. Thank you. Um, we spoke briefly behind cameras. I yeah. like your energy, your enthusiasm, how, the, the passion you have for Africa and what mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. Um, people are watching you for the first time. They mm -hmm. might not know who you are. Briefly, introduce yourself uh, to the people watching you. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Iyadini Badibo. Um, I am Director of Sales and Marketing for Eco Hotels and Suites, the most sought after hospitality property in all of West Africa. Um, I have been here for 13 years mm -hmm. in this role. and I think that one of the most exciting things about what I do is there's never a dull moment. Mm. You, you're constantly, um, you, you, you're sitting on a bed that is a platform mm -hmm. that consistently puts Africa on the global map. I like that. And, and you know, just in terms of creativity, um, innovation, um, you know, th there's no limit to where you start to where you're going mm -hmm. it's just always something exciting coming up and you know you're either hosting the the world's biggest football rugby players or presidents or you know wow. and it, it's fun mm -hmm. it, it's exciting mm -hmm. i've been here and then every single day there's a huge event happening yeah I, i'm like what every single day yeah, yeah there yeah. was a award i think what was the the name? amvca exactly yeah. it was a huge everybody every celebrity in nigeria was there yes the next day there was it, a, i would say in africa there were lots of people from all over africa yeah who were present i think yeah. that's very impressive for a mm -hmm. hotel like that mm -hmm. um i never anticipated meeting or even seeing that kind of standard of hotel here yeah. in lagos coming yeah. because of the misconception and the stereotype people had mm -hmm. let's speak about that you've been here 13 years what was the beginning of that journey like how was people reacting to this development and how are people reacting to it now mm. i mean the transition yeah well at the time i came here 13 years ago um i think that we may have been the uh, the 
only major hotel mm, mm. that there was in Lagos. As That's you it. know, Lagos yeah. is the city center and the commercial hub. Mm -hmm. And this is where um, a lot of the big businesses and commercial activities happen in Nigeria. Mm. Um, and, you know, 13 years ago, y you would people were still sort of struggling to be in Echo Hotel and if we were full it would be a problem it, yeah. it meant that there was no rooms in the city and things like that but today I mean the dynamics have changed mm. um, we're not a brand chain hotel even though we started out as we, we, I mean historically we were Le Meridian mm -hmm. we were a core at some point mm -hmm. um, and now we're a fully owned um, indigenous um, hospitality business. Okay. We don't have any brand affiliation to our name. In fact, we are a brand on our own. Mm -hmm. And I would say that we may not be international in mm -hmm. terms of have hotel properties around the world, mm -hmm. but um, international chain hotels that are here have us to worry about when I they're see. here, just in terms of mm -hmm. being competitive mm -hmm. and, and you know what we offer versus what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, in the last 13 years, many amazing things have happened here. And like I said in mm -hmm. the start of this conversation, right. is one of the things that excites me the most about yeah. working here yeah. is that, you know, we, we've built All a, a 7,000-seater capacity convention center. This is where the AMVC happened. This is where most of the big concerts and shows, mm -hmm. comedy shows, music shows, conferences and exhibitions, all of these kinds of massive events um, happen here. Because, mm. I mean, firstly, we're the most probably the only ones that have the capacity to take it right but we're also in a in in the city center mm -hmm. or in victoria island right um we are echo hotel so that already gives your event yeah. prestige right if you're able to do your event because the here, brand is already established because the brand is established um in terms of security and mm -hmm. safety mm -hmm. you know it's it's top notch um it's the reason why all the oil companies mm -hmm. and the big multinational mm -hmm. companies have block rooms here I see. and because it, it's safe mm -hmm. it's it, we're constantly auditing every single aspect of our business I see. so you, we i think that the owners are quite visionary i like that and and at every mm -hmm. point we're expanding mm -hmm. to something bigger and mm -hmm. something better i see um we built the echo signature hotel yes um a couple of years back uh, this was because we had also come to the point where you know you have the radisons mm -hmm. the four points the sheratons mm -hmm. you know the marriott's all over the place and you know competition came right and competition is healthy yes. so we we had to build a property that stands a chance to compete I like that. you know um and again we're constantly giving you that variety mm. so whether you're looking for budget you know people who are looking for budget are going to echo gardens people yeah. who are looking for luxury mm -hmm. are coming to echo signature mm -hmm. people who are looking for a nice view and high floors are in the main hotel mm -hmm. and if you're looking for peace and quiet mm. you can go to echo suite i like that so i mean yeah we've we even before the market realizes what their need is, mm. we're feeding it. I like that. And, and that's, that's the beauty of Echo yeah, And there, there's several restaurants in here. Absolutely. How many, how many restaurants are in there? We've got n seven restaurants typically, but mm. I would say nine structures as mm. restaurants. Wow. Um, Sky Restaurant um, is probably one of the oldest that we have here. Yeah. Um, it's on the, on the, the rooftop. rooftop of the main hotel building. Yeah. Um, we're about to start renovations mm -hmm. in, in, in that restaurant, but mm -hmm. I think that it's one of the finest restaurants just in terms of its consistency over the, over the years. Yeah. Um, right now, the renovation will give it a new lease of life, mm. of course, but mm -hmm. because it's one of the oldest in, 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 in the city. Mm -hmm. um, but the food's great mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's a beautiful view yeah. all the time. Yeah. I like the view up there. You can literally see the whole of Exactly, the exactly. Like, interesting. Let's, exactly. Just, let's just talk about a little bit of the... Um, the development system, even in terms of real estate, yeah. uh, that you've, uh, you've witnessed so far here in VI and, and where you think that is going in the next five years? You know what? The weird thing about the question you just asked is, yeah. I, I recently completed my, my well, not complete, I graduated in November, my doctorate, and my thesis, my research work was about Lagos yeah. having a mega city status, mm. uh, being seen as a mega city, yeah. you know, and competing with other mega cities globally I like that, and yeah. there's absolutely no reason mm -hmm. why Lagos cannot compete mm -hmm. I mean they have the numbers it, we have the numbers yeah you know we have infrastructure wise mm -hmm. um, commercially mm -hmm. you know in terms of the diversity of the people mm -hmm. um, 
it, it's just it, it it's you can you can you can walk everywhere in Lagos and just see life mm. happening. You mm. see commerce mm -hmm. happening. See SMEs are are taking over, mm. and you find a lot of people. You talk about people yeah. coming out from the diaspora, um, the diaspora, and moving back home. Mm -hmm. Lagos gives you an opportunity to move back to something, mm -hmm. you know, because you know there's a lot of young people doing right. great things um, in in different industries. industries in, yeah. in 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 film, you see what's happening mm, yeah. the, with the movie industry the movie, now. Yeah. It's become it's way bigger now. Exactly, musically, where I, I don't even. I mean, you would go to a party and. For the four hours duration, yeah, Afro, Afro you're playing African music yeah. and you're not missing anything. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, you find great young Nigerians with brilliant ideas. Mm. People are now producing here, mm. making candles. You know, you find people doing. Yeah. Um, in Lekki, for instance, I don't mm. know if you've been, mm. the I entire by, yeah. drive of Lekki is fully commercial. Mm -hmm in every corner there's one small business or the other mm. opening up and you know just the sheer creativity yeah. of what the what the what the um, middle mm -hmm. class is bringing to the economy mm -hmm. of west africa is mm -hmm. unimaginable mm. and a lot of that is born out of the exposure that you get with africans traveling abroad yeah. going to study mm -hmm. getting experiences mm -hmm. work experiences mm -hmm. Nowhere is like home. I like that. You, you will come back home, and yeah. when you come back home, you want to put in yeah. your everything, mm -hmm. what you've learned, what you you know. So it, it is exciting. Mm -hmm. I just hope that you know we the government continues to do more, mm. you know, in West Africa to enable SMEs mm -hmm. just explore, explore, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and and grow the economy because we are the soul. You yeah. know, I like know. that. I mean, one thing that I think we have to you know do is inter inter traveling within West Africa, yeah. make it more easier, yeah, uh, so that other African Africans can also come in easily yeah. to. Explore the place now. One thing I'm saying, I'm only ask you is how has business in that people moving to to Nigeria coming mm. for business compared to 13 years ago compared to now? Has there been any, been any difference that you've you've noticed? You know, example people coming to the hotel booking for business. Some people come for holiday, right? Do you have the metrics of that? And yeah, so I would say that um, we're predominantly a business hotel, mm. right? But I would say that COVID. Um, Post-COVID, something happened. Mm. Um, people were forced to think internally. Um, the luxury of having to look to the West for everything was just not there. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. borders were closed. Uh, you know, people understood that, you know what, I'm safer in my yeah. own home and in my own space. Um, so I would say that 70% of our business is of our you know of our clientele is business mm. but in the last six years um, we as well post COVID mm -hmm. started to think more critically about capturing mm. the market of leisure mm. Mm, um, and that's growing if you ask me okay um, five years ago we trademarked a product called Tropical Christmas Wonderland. Mm -hmm. Typically in, in the hotel here at, in December, mm -hmm. which is the, the, one of the biggest holidays in the year, yeah. um, most businesses have shut down yeah. and um, you find all the musical concerts and the comedy shows and stuff happening in the convention. Mm -hmm. But as a business, you are not filling up 850 rooms. Mm. But in the last five years, when we launched this Tropical Christmas Wonderland product, it was designed to, to open up that mm. ecosystem mm. so that you have a lot more people coming into the hotel for leisure reasons. Mm. So we then had to curate um, different activities in the hotel, mm -hmm. create packages where you stay either for five days, right. seven days, mm -hmm. or 10 days. Mm -hmm. And in there you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner, oh, wow. buffet style. Mm -hmm. um, you get tickets to watch the shows yeah, happening show in the hotel, okay. but also shows that we curate and bring onto, mm. onto it. Theatre is one of my biggest passions. Mm -hmm. We launched our theatre, um, I'd say two years ago, mm -hmm. and we're doing Broadway-style theatre productions. High quality. Um, high quality productions. In fact, we have, we, um, we the last year, mm -hmm. we had um, written a script, a play called The Pride Land, mm -hmm. and this is just, again, talking about yeah. Africa and mm -hmm. bringing Africa again mm -hmm. to the forefront mm. and, and, and being part of the 
positive narrative mm. of Africa. Mm. Because what, what most people hear yeah. is all the gory stories. Yeah. And that's not Africa. No, you and I know true. that that's not Africa. So. <laughs> I mean, that's my topic. You want to dive into that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, do, do as you please, but I, I just need to point that out. That yeah. is definitely not Africa. And there's, there is humongous amount mm -hmm. of people, mm -hmm. talent, um, that, that just makes Africa such mm -hmm. a beautiful nation mm. it is you know? what, what do you think that stereotypical view that people have of africa affects us here the economy wise um what, how do you think that affects us to be honest with you i think it's a perception mm -hmm. that we should change mm. um but it really doesn't help that you know as a people mm. we are not culturally wired to love ourselves mm. and this is the problem mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how crazy america is or what's going on in america an american would hold an american flag and say you know what yeah i'm, I'm american. american yeah now an african is much prouder to hold a blue passport mm -hmm. than he, he is to hold a green passport and there's a reason why mm -hmm. we're wired yeah. a different exactly. a certain type of way mm. now while that seems like the numb we have to make a conscious effort mm -hmm. to, to change start that. changing that narrative because I do not know that even the West doesn't like the sun, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So if you have the pleasure mm -hmm. of owning the sun, mm -hmm. you better take full ownership mm -hmm. of it, you know? Like that. And that can mean mm -hmm. many different things. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's pregnant, mm -hmm. you know? You've been in indus this industry for a very long time. If an investor is watching this and, and probably, I mean, you've, you've met, I'm sure you've been, the position that you, you are in, you've met a lot of business folks, people coming to Nigeria, do business and whatnot. You've seen people make their business that fail or succeed. Yeah. If you have an advice on what you've been able to observe over the years, uh, in this industry that you want to give an advice to an investor what would you say he should focus on what kind of industry they should you know kind of dive themselves into or invest into you know what firstly mm -hmm. before advising on industry because to be honest with you mm -hmm. really um and truly mm -hmm. whoever is looking to invest in africa mm -hmm. needs to understand that it's okay to do it afraid mm. um nothing is going to you there is no report or case study that would that, give you the that is going to give <laughs> you a textbook approach yeah. to why you should come to Africa mm -hmm. or not. Mm. I do know that people who have done it afraid mm -hmm. have come here and have succeeded, the, and they see. would never leave. Mm. There are people who have come in here and thought, you know what, this is not the normal way to do things. Like all the bureaucracies that you have to, all the hurdles yeah. that you have to to cross in order to get simple things done. You know, it's it's not the same. We're we're, we're just wired a certain type of way, mm -hmm. and it's either you absolutely love mm -hmm. the chaos that we're made yeah. of, yeah, or you chicken out <laughs> and go away. Yeah, and if you ask me, mm -hmm. you chicken out and go away. You're the loser. Yeah, because Africa is a land of opportunities, and there's a future. And 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 the future is is unimaginable. Mm. Mm. And I'm not talking about a future wherein lies the old cargoes if you know what i mean yeah the old you know um the old folk that we keep for some strange reason <laughs> recycling <laughs> as if we don't have over a billion smart young vibrant geniuses yes but you know when you and mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. take ownership of the narrative i think that mm -hmm. um more and more investors will start to see like the pos possibilities that exist in africa i like that i've seen a lot of business even in ghana mm. leave ghana mm -hmm. to come to nigeria yeah okay right i think one of one company if i'm not mistaken i'll put it on the screen if i do remember left because nigeria have a bigger market cap yeah. and population than um, um ghana yeah and everybody's moving back yeah. but it, the next thing i wanted to speak about is i've met diasporans people of uh, nigerian descent yeah ghanaian descent who try to move back to nigeria ghana and then leave because there's a is it nepa yeah because the light, light goes out and they're checking out like you'd say um we still want these people back we need them back mm. to be able to come bring their knowledge to contribute to the development of this nation if mm. you have something to say to these kind of people mm. what would that be you know what in every situation mm -hmm. you have to look for the light mm. you know I, I, I do not believe that where there's trouble, mm -hmm. the first thing that anybody should think of is to run away mm. from the trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you walking into less trouble 
mm. are you working to less less uh, mm -hmm. less of a situation mm -hmm. if you said you were moving from Lagos to the yeah. Nigeria to Ghana yeah, Ghana yeah. to Cote d'Ivoire to you know mm -hmm. as long as for me mm -hmm. as long as we are investing mm. and fueling the pot of Africa mm -hmm. nothing else matters mm. and in every situation always look for the light mm. and I use light synonymously because yeah. you talk about nepa yeah <laughs> do you know what yeah when the light goes on mm -hmm. and off mm -hmm. in my head mm -hmm. is like shutting my eyes and opening it mm. that's what it is mm. it's it's it our power situation is what it is mm -hmm. it's not good mm -hmm. the government needs to do a lot more mm -hmm. the, but th those are all the problems mm. but then it's also an opportunity there is an opportunity mm -hmm. and why are we losing focus mm -hmm on the bigger picture which mm -hmm. is the opportunity yeah and 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 you know sort of sinking ourselves mm -hmm. in all the problems it's mm -hmm. difficult yeah and i work a nine-to-five job here mm -hmm. and i absolutely love it mm -hmm. but i'm an entrepreneur okay and i'm a business owner that's great i own a spa franchise out of bali in indonesia oh wow and i went to indonesia looking for alternative fertility treatment mm. i found this beautiful herbal spa wow. and i didn't stop at anything wow. but convincing them to come into Africa. Interesting. Today it's 10 years old. We have seven branches across, thank you, across Nigeria. But I, I point this out to say to you that uh, being an entrepreneur is, m is not the easiest thing to do in Africa. It's, it's not because it's actually you, the most you, difficult. It is. It is. And you're you're fighting against too many demons. You're producing your own electricity. You're producing your own water, you know, stuff are not necessarily wired to have dignity of labor mm. so it's difficult to get the right kind of people mm. to do the right Even kind when of they jobs come, they leave. and when they come it's always about you have a generation of people who are not ready to so. ride the tide and you know <laughs> you, you walk me too much yeah. I'm yeah. by I think most you know? businesses face this a lot yeah. with it, with but yeah. what are you are you gonna say am I gonna shut down that business no. I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna c carry on with it mm -hmm. I will get this there's there's joy in consistency mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. but you just have to keep at it mm -hmm. you know you cannot constantly see all the problems of mm -hmm. africa mm -hmm. i see there's nothing good about africa I so i would say that for africans in the diaspora mm -hmm. the land is green and if the if the if the fertility of the land mm -hmm. is not good enough reason for you to shut out all the reasons mm -hmm. why you would be frustrated mm -hmm. at least try mm. at least try mm. you know and if you are consistent in trying and if you have your eyes on the ball mm -hmm. then all the challenges mm -hmm. will just be you know things you have to yeah, deal with you'll enjoy why, it why you th well, aren't there problems in the uk there's aren't there problems in the us there is aren't there problems in south africa problem everywhere. everybody has their problems so that can be your excuse you have to own your problem mm. and absolutely love it i like that yeah like if you do have a final message to mm. people watching to inspire um, what would our message be? Uh, I'll first say mm. that Eco Hotel is the most beautiful hospitality edifice in all of West Africa, mm -hmm. if I must say so myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in order for you to decide whether I'm faffing you around yeah. or not, come to us in December and see magic mm. happen here. Mm. See mm. talent happen mm. here see creativity in its in its fullness mm -hmm. happen here mm -hmm. i'm not we're not trying to compete with anybody mm. we're doing our own mm -hmm. um the way that we understand it and we're proud of what we're mm. doing mm -hmm. so um i would first say that you know we we're not we're not perfect we're mm. not without you know issues here and there mm -hmm. but we are a property that is built on core principles mm -hmm. of servicing the current and potential need mm. of our client i like that and that is mm -hmm. something that you must absolutely love yeah. about eco hotels it's a beautiful we're it's not huge we're, 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 it's huge mm -hmm. and it's purposeful mm -hmm. there's nothing claustrophobic about mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. we're free as a bird you mm -hmm. can walk from one building to, the, to another the most, with a, even if you are the gardens you have access to almost everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so That's whole amazing. point so um whether or not the owners had a, a, a mindset of building a resort hotel when it started mm. or not i don't know mm -hmm. but we are a resort hotel mm. and and that's that just makes us beautiful mm -hmm. um 
we, we give you options that give you that feeling of I just want to explore mm -hmm. and I really want to be on a holiday mm -hmm. and even though our business is predominantly corporate mm -hmm. leisure market has started to see opportunities with what we intentionally mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. and I think it's a place that you should look out to mm -hmm. especially at Christmas mm -hmm. when you're looking for a different this vibe is, yeah holiday I like um, that. so that's that on the hospitality mm -hmm. side for the diasporans mm -hmm. I would say that nothing is as important as blowing your own trumpet mm. because nobody is going to blow it for you for you. <laughs> you are always going to be a diasporan mm -hmm. so when you start to understand that anywhere else you are second-class citizen mm. focus then goes to where do i go to and own mm. the place where do i go to and become lord and master of my own art and my own destiny you know and only your place mm -hmm. affords you that mm. so you have to look for the light i like that in africa i like that. and you have to grab the light in africa you have to do it afraid mm -hmm. but you have to be one of those people mm -hmm. who takes africa and mm -hmm. puts africa where it rightfully belongs mm. top mm. on the global map i like that now you made mention of your entrepreneur jenny yeah if you don't mind let's dive into it a little bit before we go that's fine is it, you have time no of okay course. so being i know it's hard mm -hmm. right then you you did it hard you yeah. had to go through the bruises and then yeah. come on top of it you yeah. know successful what were some of the things you'd say you went through that kind of hurt you hard that could have pushed you to say let me give up and how did you maneuver your way to even to see 10 years moving forward now mm -hmm. to be proud of you you know what you've been able to create for yourself to inspire the upcoming and even people going through the same thing right now mm -hmm. i tell you what you know what it, it, it's, it's a simple case of even today mm -hmm. At 10 years after, I still get frustrated with doing <laughs> business in Nigeria. I ask myself, are you the only mad person that is left here that <laughs> believes in Africa? Mm. And the answer is yes. Mm. I do believe in Africa. Mm -hmm. I do believe in, in my people. I believe in my culture. I embrace my culture and my people with, with grace. Um, and I know that even in the imperfection of us as a people, mm. Mm. even... Mm. In that imperfection, still there is potential that is yet untapped. Mm. And if hope is anything to feed on, I, I'm holding on to that as mm -hmm. hope. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why I'm still on a job, mm -hmm. apart from the fact that I absolutely love what I do, mm -hmm. um, is the fact that I um, is the fact that I believe that uh, you. I, I I don't get all the fulfillment and satisfaction. Mm -hmm from being an entrepreneur mm. and I'm still scared mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if, if business changes, if government changes mm -hmm. and the rules of engagement changes and the dollar goes what to a place do? where I'm, what am I going to do? I'm still in a job. Mm -hmm. So this is my cushion. Mm -hmm. I still have a nine to five job mm. where I'm constantly learning, mm. adding value mm. and firming up myself mm -hmm. as a, uh, firming up myself as an entrepreneur that has understanding of being an employee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that way you have the best of both worlds. Balance, I see. So I'm still afraid. I'm still doing it, but I'm edging all my bets mm -hmm. and cushioning all the potential mm -hmm. um, problems that I see mm -hmm. um, with well, finding creative ways mm -hmm. to just augment. That, that's good. The wow potential risk mm. that exists mm -hmm. with being an entrepreneur this morning day entrepreneurs they just want to be an entrepreneur without having to serve yeah why and that's a problem why do you think we have that mindset i don't know it's a generational thing to be honest i think that in my uh, uh, i understand that in order for you to be a, a, a great business owner you have to be have been a great employee Seven, yeah. employee yeah. you know and i mean relate this however you like even the bible teaches you that Jesus was servant. Yeah. He was a servant. He was a servant leader. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to lead effectively, mm -hmm. you have to understand that mm -hmm. you have to be able to serve mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what's going on with today's generation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the advent of, of, of digital um, media, 
um, social media is giving a lot of us a warped understanding of of how to stop to mm. conquer mm. right mm -hmm. um, and that's a little sad um, but I think that mentorship is a key thing that Africans need right. and Africans who have succeeded in mm -hmm. business mm. should be doing a lot more talking to people that, that, they're who hiding are, they're why? hiding, they're hiding. And, they're <laughs> hiding. And, and these are the people who should be in government mm -hmm. because can you imagine uh, people who have been successful to in build business, business can be able to mm -hmm. can you imagine what they will do with the mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because yeah, they can create more jobs I mean, because they've been doing it. Yeah, for they, 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 they have the understanding of how to mm -hmm. multiply things mm -hmm. and how to make the market move. Mm -hmm. You know, they're wired that way. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think they will be the best people mm -hmm. to serve in government. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so let's, let's we, we know the story. <laughs> story for another day. <laughs> another day. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, um, mm -hmm. you, you kind of have an accent. Do you, you live in any abroad at any point? Uh, I think my accent is as a result, firstly, of of the fact that I. I was brought up in a home and a family mm. that speaking properly mm. um, <laughs> was a thing, you know. Yeah. Um, I did study English mm -hmm. um, at some point in the university mm -hmm. um, for my diploma, and I'm passionate about speaking properly. I have mm -hmm. lived in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. but there is not one place that you would find me owning mm -hmm. other than Africa. Mm. And even if I lived anywhere abroad, I'm not here to say that <laughs> the accent is as a result yeah, of anywhere. It's just that I speak properly. I like that. It's just a, her English is very posh. <laughs> 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 this has been a very great conversation. Um, I, I love Echo Hotel. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm you. definitely going to... Because it's like a network. It's yeah. just not me sleeping... Yeah. The, it's just like I, I have access to all kinds of people, yes. business owners, yeah. that me just being here, you know, we've, we've yeah. been able to connect and yeah. God knows what would be able to yeah. come out of in the future. Yeah. So, yeah, I really recommend, you know, to guys you, to check it out anytime you are in Lagos. It's a VI, right? It's in Victoria yeah. Island, yeah. So, tell me about Lagos. How many islands do you guys have anyways? Uh, there are many, well, you know, the island, all the islands are on one stretch of the Atlantic, right? But okay. they're, we're sitting bang in the middle of um, what used to be Marocco area, mm -hmm. the trial mm -hmm. area, and, and I think this is the biggest landmass in that entirety. But there, there is a lot of smaller we islands can, yeah. around. We, mm, we can see that that's Eco Atlantic that's City. That's Eco Atlantic. That's the future I see. of West Africa. Do you want to talk about it? I don't know much about it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't talk about it from, a, from, a, from, a, from an Eco Hotel, Eco Atlantic um, property development perspective, mm -hmm. but from um, many other perspectives. See, what mm, I see, mm. I see. I mean, that used to be called the Bar Beach. The Bar Beach. I remember as a kid that the street, mm -hmm. you know, that tows the entire stretch of the Atlantic, mm -hmm. is called Amadou Bilo. Mm -hmm. There were houses on the other side of it. And I recall as a child mm -hmm. that we used to go to the beach. And at some point, we couldn't go to the beach anymore because it was just too, too dangerous. Harsh. And the, the tides were really high. And the water was overflowing. It's banked into the, the roads, into the, roads, mm -hmm. into the houses. And when the project started, for me, it was almost like magic. It was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. Dubai is happening in Nigeria. Wow. You know? And when they started to, you know, reclaim the land mm -hmm. and when they put the wall, right. you know, it, for me, it was like, I mean, you're, you're, you're building a brand new city that has the potential of just changing the narrative completely, Amazing. you know, in Lagos. And it, it, it's, a, it's a massive thing for Lagos, mm -hmm. for Nigeria mm -hmm. and for Africa. Yes, it's Because it, it's, almost, it's almost like you're, this is a Dubai coming to life yes. in Africa. Yes, You know, yes. Um, the one thing I'll say is, you know, of course, because it, it's an expensive project, um, at the start of it now, you, you find that there's only a market of people mm -hmm. that have interest in it. Yeah. But as the city develops, it's a city. I'm hoping it's, huge. it's a city. I'm hoping that you would have um, a middle class mm. that would give life mm. to the city mm -hmm. and not make it as artificial mm -hmm. as um, other, you know, um, fabricated mm -hmm. cities mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. you know um, y you have to give it a soul mm -hmm. and I, I think this is what Africa yeah. does yeah. if you go to the UK it's, yeah. cold. it's cold it can be miserable no so there's no soul yes. if you go to America it's too big mm -hmm. and everybody's in their own shell minding their business the one time they come around mm -hmm. it almost looks like family mm -hmm. but that's that's where Africa is different mm -hmm. it's warm 
We, we, and and, and yeah. every, your support system yeah. is such a cushion that, I mean, yeah. let's always look for the yeah. good in that. Africa. I love that. Because I think it, it always, mm -hmm. you know, all those things that we sort of amplify. Mm. What, what do you see, I mean, Echo, is, is that connected? Echo is Echo Hotels and then that's Echo Hat Atlantic. Is so that it's, connected? It's the same owners. It's the same owners. And they're okay. the same, it's the same brain behind. I see. You know, the project. Hopefully, like we, we build another hotel in the city mm -hmm. um, and it will expand Eco Hotel. Mm -hmm. But many exciting things are coming up in that city. I'm mm -hmm. sure you already know. Mm -hmm. um, there are apartments there that are, you know, I mean, if you go into, if you go on the, on the 14th floor of one yeah. of those apartments there, yeah. you, you almost feel like you're conquering the world. Yeah. Even That's for, the right Yes. Now. Even for middle class the aspirational middle class is something to look forward to saving up to mm -hmm. so you know you when you build anticipation mm -hmm. and you, you you give a platform for people to aspire to mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. uh, that, that 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 in itself mm -hmm. is, is growth i like this growth you're full of wisdom if a young woman was watching watching you right now yes and they were like wow i would love to be like this woman when i grow up oh what god what do we tell to that that person <laughs> because trust well, me maybe you don't look at it because you you are living it yeah but from the outside looking in mm -hmm. um people some women might be inspired seeing a, a powerful woman like yourself in the position you are speaking yeah. with this kind of intelligence well uh, what would you say to that I'd young start girl? by saying thank you very much i appreciate the compliment um i'm not sure i, I would say that my my um my principles in life are very simple and basic. Live well, mm. love well, mm. and be free mm. in all things. Um, chase your dreams and your career, and as long as you can imagine it, you can achieve it. Mm. I'm an heiress, which means I'm a ram. So I don't know whether my zodiac sign mm -hmm. has anything to do with this, mm -hmm. but I'm quite bullish. Mm. And <laughs> there is nothing I imagine in my head mm -hmm. that I cannot chase. Like and as that. long as I can chase it, I'm going to achieve it. I like that. So if, if that's any word of wisdom, mm -hmm. as long as you can dream it, mm -hmm. don't stop. Mm. Chase it. I like and ensure that. that you achieve everything. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know what? Whether or not you did exactly what you wanted to do or not, trying mm -hmm. is something it's itself. Something. It's something She's itself. my fellow Aries. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, nice. Yeah. Nice. So I, I totally get it. All right, it's been amazing. Uh, thank you very you know, much. It's a pleasure with you. chatting with you too. And thank you for being, you know, actively involved in changing the African mm. narrative. Because mm. imagine that the world had a lot more of you. Right. I think... Africa would be a better place yeah. and if Africa is a better place mm -hmm. the world would be a better place because Africa yes, is injected the world I like that thank, thank you. you so much thank you too all right guys thank you for watching this has been an amazing conversation and uh, if you guys want to watch you know similar content like that subscribe uh, you know check some other videos on the on the channel and I come back for more all right so without further ado let's just say bye bye to the people watching all right bye Thanks.